What's up wizards? I am here to explain to you the infer keyword. I should have the board behind me and be going, you know, it connects to this, it connects to this, it connects to this. But the infer keyword is actually like, I don't think it's as complex as a lot of people think it is. So I'm here to try to demystify the infer keyword for you. When I was doing research on what people want to know for this channel, the infer keyword kept keeps being something that people search for on YouTube. So I'm here to answer it. We're going to cover all of the use cases that the docs themselves don't cover. I mean, they might, you know, rewrite the docs after this video, but we'll see. And you'll see that the info keyword is just a way to create a type within a conditional type. There you go. You've got it. You can exit the video now. No, you want a bit more explanation. Okay. Let's go into some IDE stuff. In order to understand infer, we first need to understand what a conditional type is. We're going to have a type result. And we're going to say, let's say, we'll say true extends Boolean. And if true does extend Boolean, we're going to return one. Otherwise, we're going to return zero. I'm getting some blue lines in my IDE here, which is telling me what all of these pieces are. This is from my total TypeScript VS Code extension, which I will add a link to just above. But I've just hidden them now for the purpose of the video. So we have a conditional type here, which is we have result and result is being returned as one here. If we were to reverse these and say boolean extends true, the mental model you have to have is to check that this is true and then pass a boolean to it. So we could say like, uh, let's say we have const a, which is a boolean, which we're gonna say false, then this doesn't match up to this because we have to pass in true, but technically this could be either true or false. These conditional types in TypeScript are a kind of an advanced feature and they drive a lot of what's kind of the most complex, interesting stuff about TypeScript. Any library out there is going to be using conditional types and infer and lots of this stuff to build a lot of its more complex types. Let's extend this type helper a little bit. We're going to have a function which is like, let's imagine that we have a function here where we have a check which is Boolean and we return blah, 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 blah. Now we want to create a type helper that gives us the result of this here. So this function, it returns a string. Let's create a type helper, which kind of captures that return type. In fact, instead of creating a type helper, what I've done here is I've just reused return type here, which is a global type helper that TypeScript provides and passed in type of func. Now our func result is being typed as string. And if I change this to a number instead, then it's going to be a number. Now, how does return type work? Well, return type, if you command click into it, it's just a type, just like any other type really that you can define. If I copy and paste it, I can add it here and now we've got access to it and can change it. So this code might look pretty complicated to you, but this is what's called a conditional check. It's just like the one we have up here. So if I extract this out and just comment this out, then what I can do is I can say type result to equals t extends. Okay, so t is not defined because t comes from the thing that you pass into return type. So let's create this, let's say type of func extends args any. And you notice there's a little infer there. Hmm, interesting. Let's strip that out for now. Let's imagine that this is just like any here. And we're going to say if type of func extends any function, this syntax basically means it can have any amount of arguments in it and it can return anything, then let's return one, otherwise we're going to return zero. And result two is typed as one. That means type of func is like it matches up to that type. Wouldn't it be really useful if if it matched, we wanted to extract information from the thing that it matched. An equivalent idea is if you're trying to, let's say, replace something in a string. So let's imagine we have like, hello world, friend, whatever. And what we want to do is actually, we want to extract this and this, so like uh, underscores and dashes, and we want to make them three times as long. We want to like extend them for whatever mad reason. Now, what we could do here is we could just replace them all with underscores, so three underscores, but actually we want to take the thing that's there and like make it three times as long. So the way we do that is we would have a function in here and we would say, okay, item. So this is going to be the thing that matches and blah, 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 blah. We have to basically like return. What is this going to be? I think this is going to be item. Is it matches that item? Yeah, this is a string item and item. And what that's going to do then, it's going to match the thing that we were able to match and then return it. 
But imagine if I wasn't able to like instantiate this variable here, I'd be really screwed. I wouldn't have a method for like taking the thing that I found and then reusing it. And this is the exact mental model that you need in order to be able to use infer correctly. Infer lets you find something out about the thing that you're investigating, instantiate a variable and then reuse that variable however you want to. So here we've got our result to, we're doing this check, type of func extends this thing, and we want to infer the return type. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take this and we're going to say, infer, let's say, result here, so R. This R is exactly like the item that we've instantiated down there. It's just a temporary variable that's going to help us do some manipulation on it. And because it's in this position, what it's doing is it infers the return type from the thing that we checked. So just to hammer this home, this is our regex, and this is the thing that we're extracting from it. And what we can do in this situation, we can return R here. And this is going to now be the thing that's being returned from our function up here. If I change this to a boolean, let's say, then result2 ends up as a boolean. What happens though if we don't manage to pattern match here? Like what happens if we pass in the wrong thing? Well, we can return never here. And this is, you'll often find infer paired with never. Because what this means is that if we have just like a random variable here, like const whatever equals an object here, we can say type of whatever extends this. And now result2 is going to be never because we didn't manage to pattern match here. We didn't manage to find the thing that we cared about. And so we should return never because never is a kind of way in TypeScript of throwing an error. Never is like something that should never ever be allowed. It doesn't give you a red line when you create types with never because sometimes that will just happen. But what it does is it means that if you try to use it in like a union, so type um, something, you give me something or result to, then this is going to actually like never is going to like disappear from the equation and you'll get a union type of all of the other members. So never is a really, really useful type in TypeScript because it lets you express something that shouldn't be possible. It's kind of like having zero available as a number. You know, you have zero of something. Never is like you have no version of that type that can exist. So, so far then this, if I change this back to type of func extends, then this is kind of like, this is a static type here. It's not going to change based on what we pass it in. To make it actually like similar to this return type, we need to pass in something that is going to be checked. So what we can do is let's say we have a type fake return type, then we're going to say not type of func, but we're going to say T and then do the check there. So one cool thing about a conditional check is it can be applied to anything. It doesn't constrain what gets passed in. You notice that on this return type, we're actually constrained by what we can pass in here. So if we try to pass in a uh, type of whatever into here, then it's going to yell at us because type of whatever doesn't satisfy the constraint args any any. So what this means then is this one actually doesn't have a constraint on it. So we can pass in type of whatever. If I say fake return type there, then this func is going to be never because type of whatever doesn't match this thing that we're matching here. But if we change this to type of func, then we're going to end up with Boolean because we're properly extracting out the element that we want here. The cool thing about having this element too is that we can actually like do some stuff to it. So we can say R or string or undefined uh, or uh, whatever, like this uh, empty object type. And that then gets added to the thing that gets returned. There's one more thing you could do. Let's imagine that we wanted to say, okay, if, if we get this R, then we're going to put it in a template literal and we're going to say like return type here or something. Now this R is going to moan at us because R can technically be anything, it can be string, like it's not assignable to things that you would usually pass in to a type helper, or sorry, to a template literal here. One way we could do it is do another conditional check. We could do R extend string 
uh, otherwise never here. And then this starts getting really ugly, but at least then we know that R is a string. But we can actually make this a lot cleaner if we just revert all of that crud that I just added. We can say that infer R extends string. Ah, no, I was wrong actually. I needed to like add some parentheses around here and then this whole thing then gets wrapped in parentheses. But now we get to put a constraint on this thing here. Like R now, in order to infer it properly, it has to be a string. This means that our function here, which is currently returning a Boolean, this is actually going to be resolved as never because it doesn't match up to a string. Whereas if we do add it to a string there, then we get string return type. I can even add an as const onto here in order to resolve this as it's literal. And so you end up with blah, 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 return type. So you might be getting a sense for what is possible with infer here. Let's imagine that we want to have a type helper here which says get from deep object and what this is going to do is it's going to say t extends if we have an object with like a b c we're going to infer what c is and then we're going to return c otherwise we'll return never this means then we'll be able to extract c and say type c is get from deep object and then pass in a b C and C is going to be a number. Let's now hover over C and you can see that C is inferred as a number. If I change this to Boolean, we get C is Boolean. And of course, if I change this to D instead, then this is going to be resolved as never. This is just like a pattern match, right? We're trying to pattern match this exact pattern. And if we manage to get it, then we instantiate C as part of that. This is my mental model for infer. You can only use it within a conditional type. Like you can't do any other fancy stuff with infer. It's got one use and this is that one use. A lot of people think of infer as this really broad concept that's applicable in lots of places in TS. No, it's got one use case and we've covered it entirely here. I wanna show you one more cool trick and then I promise we're done. If we imagine in our get from deep object, we can actually say t extends this, then infer this, or we have like, imagine that c is at the top level, then we'll infer c. Maybe we have another one where we have this, and let's say we have a, and then c is at this level, infer c. And now it's like a lot more flexible. We can actually hit any of these points and we still get the same infer. So if we say a, c, boolean, then that's going to be hitting this branch and we'll end up with c is a boolean. If we just put it on the top level and just say C is a Boolean here, then C ends up as a Boolean. If we add it as a string, then it ends up as a string. If we do this, then it ends up as never, of course. And so you can actually use these union types as a way to avoid the deep nesting that sometimes comes when you have these ternaries. And yes, it's really annoying that, you know, ternaries are the only way you can express these conditional types. I wish there was some kind of like switch statement syntax that you could use with TypeScript, but you know, this is where we are. But there you go, that is infer. That that's the entire onion. Now, if you enjoyed this video, then you should like it. And do you know why you should like it? Because when you like it, the YouTube algorithm looks at that like and says, okay, they have voted for Matt Pocock's channel. And that vote means that I will share this channel to more people. It's so stupid that I have to ask for these likes, but without it, the YouTube algorithm thinks you hate the video. Did you hate the video? If not, give it a like. Also, if you dug this really complicated, in-depth look at a TypeScript concept, then you will love Total TypeScript. There's tons of free tips there, including a free beginner's course to get you up to speed. There's also a paid course, which I'm working on at the moment. But if you wanna keep it on YouTube, I have an entire playlist of advanced TypeScript tips that I did kind of a few months ago when I was first starting out with YouTube. So click on that, have fun, and I will see you very soon.